So a few weeks ago, I had the opportunity to have a conversation with Georgie Delgado, our friend, Conguero, who's played with um, so many different groups, and the Spanish Harlem Orchestra being one of them, and Laurent Erdos, who is a gifted pianist, composer, percussionist, vibe player from Paris, France. And we recorded the interview, and now I've got it as part of my, um, what should I say? It's in my, hold on one second. Oops, I did not mean for that to happen. So I've got the interview. I've archived it, and I'm going to share it with you um, because I, I didn't want to do this without you getting an hour of listening to this. You're going to hear it's in English. You're going to have a conversation between myself and my two guests uh, with the new album, which is an album that I truly enjoy that I hope all of you enjoy as well. Um, it came out ooh, maybe a few months ago, and immediately I fell in love with it. Give me a second while I pull it up for you. I'm wearing all these great albums that I've got. It's hiding, but I will find it. And it's an album that, in my estimation, is worthy of listening, not just from the point of view of those of us who do radio or do any kind of broadcasting programs, those of you who are fans of good music. This album right here. Erdos Quartet, Paris, Bronx Connection, Otro Jazz is the title of the album. So I'm going to share this one hour pre recorded conversation. Watch it. If you have comments, please share them with me. Um, I'm going to step upstairs just a second so I can see what it looks like on the big screen upstairs, but I'll be back to be part of this with you as well. So let us go to part three of our three hour program that started off with Jesus Pagan. You just heard Ricardo Pons. And now we're going to have my last two guests in hour number three. And they are Laurent Erdos, who is a pianist, composer, arranger, and producer of this album. And George Delgado Timbalero, co-producer of this album. Even though we know him playing congas with the Spanish Harlem Orchestra on this particular album, he's playing timbales. So hour number three of our special program today, Otro Jazz with our very special guest. Vamos a entrar en la tercera hora de programación para un programa especial en el cual hemos pregrabado una conversación con nuestros invitados, uh, George Delgado y Laurent Eldros. Así que vamos a la entrevista y conversación. The bottom line is that we believe strongly in love. Music is a powerful tool in defense of this noble concept, but it is only one of many creative ways in which human beings seek and share love, communication, and joy. It is the responsibility of every one of us to lift each other up every day through whatever moves us and teach the ways of nature, spirit, and science for the sake of our planet and our race, the human race. Through the wisdom of the elders and the vision and energy of the young, we can do this. Slavery, genocide, and apartheid practices have never been and never will be appropriate. We believe in peace and the opportunity to perceive joy for every human being above the dogma and hypocrisy of any religion and or government that seeks to divide us. We hope our music brings you peace and joy. John Santos, Via Escuela. Bueno, mi gente, vamos a continuar con la programación para esta tarde, la segunda hora, en la cual he mencionado, tengo dos invitados muy especiales desde París. Tengo al distinguido pianista y percusionista Lauren Eldos y desde Nueva York a mi querido amigo y hermano Georgie Delgado, que han sido tan amables de aceptar mi invitación para conversar sobre su nueva propuesta musical, en la cual estaremos hablando y escuchando música. Se titula Erdos Quartet, Paris Bronx Connection, Otro Jazz. My guests for the second hour of Consalsa Live are the pianist and composer and percussionist Laurent Erdos, who is with us from Paris, France, and our dear friend Georgie Delgado, Jorge Delgado, who is with us from 
New York. And their new recording is titled Otro Jazz, the Erdos Quartet Paris Bronx Connection, of which you've been listening to some music off of this album for several weeks now. And so for me, it's an honor and a pleasure to have both of you join me on this occasion. Lawrence, thank you for staying up and being with us from Paris, France. At, at, at this hour, it's like past midnight where you are. So thank you so much that you, you took time to join us. Thank you for the invitation. Well, I thought it was important based on, you know, when, when Georgie call, called me and said, listen, I got this project. I don't know, but, you know, it's like this little jazz, Latin jazz thing we're doing. And you might like it. And I said, yeah, let me hear it. When I heard it, I went, wait a second. What? Yeah, of course. We got to do something. We got to do something. So I was so happy that we were finally able to uh, connect. And, and George said, got him with the swing. I mean, you did it, brother. You you hooked us up. And I appreciate you doing this. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's uh, it's an honor. And also, thank you for the invitation and for, uh, you know, your response, your immediate response when I called you. And, and, and I can't thank you enough. Well, your projects have always been spectacular. I need to know, and we want to share with the audience, how is it that you in France, in Paris, and George Delgado in New York become a connection, that Bronx-Paris connection? How does that happen? I'm going to start with, with Laurent, with you, explaining your side of the story, and then I'm going to go to Georgie, hear his side of the story. So, Laurent, how was it that you and George became um, this working duo that you are? Well, I was playing <clears throat> Latin music in uh, France. I had a, a big band called Mambo Mania, and we were playing music of uh, Machito, Tito Puente, Tito Rodriguez. And uh, after a moment, I I, um, I feel that uh, I need to, to go to New York to see the, the real people who has done this music, you know? So I took one year and I stayed one year in uh, Boys Harbor Music School. And George was my teacher. Also, Jose Madera, Johnny Almendra, different, pe different people, Luis Bauso. But with George, we, we kept a very strong uh, relation. What year would this have been, Lauren? What year are we talking about now? Uh, sorry? What year was this that you went you that, went to New York? That was uh, 1909. 1909? 1920, yeah. I mean 19 99. 99. I was going to say 1999. <laughs> okay. So more than 20 more than 24 years ago. <laughs> and, and you took a whole year living in in New York just going to Boys yeah. Harbor and you and you were studying with some of the masters. I mean you mentioned, you know, uh france uh, for some point france is very good i was able to have a scholarship okay to stay in boys harbor one year mm. so i i was very lucky so george this young this pianist comes from paris france wanting to do a deep dive get his master's degree from you uh stellar musicians luminaries that he has mentioned you know um Madera, Almendra, Luis Bauza, and you and others. And when he comes to you from Paris, France, what is it he's asking of you? And what are you asking of him as a student? Well, he 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 was taking uh, bongo classes with me. And um you know, you know how the, how those things are when you you meet somebody and you immediately like you know uh, hit it off, you know, mm -hmm. in in a, in, a, in a nice way, you know. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And uh, we used to call him the French guy, and he was always at the school. You know, he was like educating himself with the with the with the culture, with the food, um, uh, you know. And he hung hung out with us, and and you know, and everybody, you know. We all we we dug you know Laurent, but we stayed many we stayed friends uh, for a long time. I mean, still to the days we were very good friends. Then uh, he went back to France, and he started a school similar to the same as Boys Harbor, mm. and the school was named Abanico. Okay, and. I believe he had Jose Madera, Dandy uh, do uh, like workshops and clinics. And then I went two, two years in a row. I went to the school in France 
to teach, you know, with and educate with the like as I would do at the at Boys Harbor, and uh, we did all the music activities. And it's more than anything, the friendship that we've had has been, uh, you know, a great thing. You know, uh, it, it's distant, but we've always stayed in touch. You know, uh, and I love him. He's 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 uh, you know, it's funny. He, he he he's he's always okay with everything. Uh, and he also, you know, says, okay, well, I don't like this. Well, let's try this. Let's try that musically. And, you know, we always work it out. So Lauren, so, Lauren, so can they, I, let me, uh, yeah. now I'm going to continue okay. now. After a long time, he comes to France. I mean, he comes to New York with his family to have a, a vacation, right? He calls me up. And he tells me, listen, I have some music for a quartet that I would like to see if we could rehearse it. And I said, okay, so it's only four guys. You know, we we fit in my basement. So let's try it. So he brings the music. I get the guys, you know, Jerry, Jerry Madera, and uh, uh, Oreste Abrantes on, on congas, and myself on timbales, and him on piano. We start rehearsing. And it sounded really good, you know, it really good. And I said, you know what? I, I said to him, kidding around, you know what? You should you should record it. And Jerry said the same thing. You should record this. You know, you should put it on a, on on a, on a record. And he said, for real. And I said, yeah, why not? And dig it. About maybe two months later, he called me back. He said, you know what? I'm going back to New York. We're gonna record it. And that's how we started this. So I was going to say, um, Lauren, they say that music, jazz in particular, is a universal language that connects all of us, regardless of where we come from, our language, our ethnicity, our nationality, our race, religion, whatever. It's the music that brings people together. You mm -hmm. came to New York Boys Harbor, but you were studying with percussionists. Were you a percussionist or were you a pianist? No, at this time I was a percussionist, but I was playing vibes. Mm -hmm. So uh, in fr uh, in France, I was playing timbales and vibes because I have I had also a band uh, called the Salsa y Bugalu, and this band were uh, was dedicated to Joe Cuba music. Okay, so we learned all the the song of uh, Joe Cuba. And then when I came uh, in New York, I play with him, with Joe Cuba. Oh, wow. That's great. Good for you. Good for you. So you're a vibist that learned how to play percussion, which is a good thing because those two things go hand in hand. Yeah. And, and when you were creating this music that we're going to... Excuse me. Just to explain, uh, I have um, I have um, living in, the, in Spain, after during se uh, seven years then i went to china mm. so when i traveled to china i i am um, I, I didn't travel with any instrument and in china i bought a piano and i began to play piano at this time so i'm a very new piano player well you are an impressive pianist because in this album you play piano you do it very well Thank you very much. So Thank you. Thank in, your, in your world travels, you're picking up another skill, another knowledge, another instrument to your repertoire. I was going to ask when you reached out to George and he responds the way he did, which I'm glad that he did as far as suggesting you do the album. Um, what were you thinking as far as what you wanted to present? Because the album has your own music and some invited guests, which we will be talking about, but you also do some standards but in a very different way that I would have expected these standards to be played. I told George, for instance, that when you do Cherokee, I was blown away. I said, that's my favorite song off the album. Cherokee is totally different than any, and, and you know all these great jazz trumpet players have played Cherokee from Wynton Marcellus to Arturo Sandoval, you name who the person is, this is Gillespie, they all have played Cherokee, but the way you do Cherokee is very different, and I know that influence comes from the percussion section and you having study percussion. So what was it you wanted to do when you were putting these songs together and you were presenting them as a possible album and then finally an album with Georgie and the other guys? 
Well, I think you you already understand my um, my work. Uh, thank you very much. Uh, be, uh, principalmente, uh, uh, I, I try to work on the jazz standard. That's the, the main idea. But I try to find original approach. On a, I will say I will try to play different as other people. If I don't find a new idea, I will not do it. So in each each, uh, by example, uh, I can't get started. Normally, it's a very slow mm -hmm. song. I decide to play this uh, fast. Uh, I try to find original idea, and uh, and I still work uh, in in this direction. I have many many jazz standards. Uh, Sometimes people play in two three, and I will play in three two. You know, uh -huh. Uh -huh. and I will change the rhythm to uh, to adapt with the a new lecture of the clave. So, Georgie, we're gonna play the first track that I want to share. Mambo, it's called Mambo Invertido, so that folks can get a sense of um, this great music that's part of this. And we will be there momentarily before we go to Mambo Invertido. Um, yes. In this song, maybe you want to explain that. Yeah. But I, I, it's a new clave in a way. Explain because, it, please. Share it with people. Because okay. That's why it's called Mambo Invertido. So <laughs> it's not a clave 2 3 or a clave 3 2. It's a clave on four bar. It's 2 3 3 2. Georgie, when you heard this being played and he said, wait a minute, it's not. And it's it, not, was, it was it was a challenge. Yeah. What were you thinking as far yeah. as you and, and the other fellas in the band when yes. you were doing this? It, it, it was a challenge for all of us because we're not used to that. So uh not that could, that we couldn't do it, it's just it, it it just we're not used to that. You know, mm -hmm. physically we all play in clave. A, a good portion of us, we you know, physically we, we know when something's out of clave because it, you feel it. But when we listen to it and we put it together, you know, we analyze it, it works. It's just that, it, you, you know, for the common ear, it's, it's not something that you get used to. But we, we had fun with it and it was a, it was a challenge. It's, for me, it was a challenge. And uh, but at the end of the day, we made it work. And, you know, I know he 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 had his maybe worries that we that that maybe we couldn't do it. And he said, no, but then if, if it's too much, then we won't do it. I said, no, 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 we, we are going to do it. We're going to do it. And, and you'll no, hear for yourself how, how, how it works out. No, I'm, I'm glad that you did it. And the piece, um, we have a few minutes before we listen to it, but what I, what I captured as I was listening to these tracks, even though they are, um, sheet music in the sense that there's an arrangement, there's written, but there's a very organic feel to what you're doing. It reminds me from time to time of the albums I have back here, the Scalgas Cubanas, the, the uh, Cachao, you know, the five uh -huh. volumes of, of, of the yeah. Scalga. So there's, there's a, there's sort of like a scripted part that I hear, no? Very well arranged and executed by the musicians and, and everybody's in the pocket. But then there's a lot of freedom that I feel that you're sort of like saying, yeah yeah there's a lot of, yeah there's a lot of space to 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 be creative you know uh and that's the that's the important thing in any any kind of arrangement that there is space uh for you to work uh you know somebody um you know a lot of us that have a lot of experience recording and and recording tunes and and sometimes uh arrangements come loaded with with uh with breaks and this and that and changes and and sometimes in my opinion right? and, and i'm not trying to say uh, anything negative but sometimes it just doesn't do much for the arrangement mm. so changes and stuff you know mm. so mm. that's why you gotta it, 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 when you you know keep it open for the creative mind to work mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. okay so that's what that's what laurent did he knows nice and and it's comfortable and and you know, like I said, the, when when we started rehearsing here, the minute we rehearsed it, the, you know, the first thing that came out of our mouths, uh, you know, Jerry and I, we said, you know, you, we should record this thing. It's, it's, it's good. <laughs> it you flowed. Know? It flowed. Lawrence, yeah. 
Let, let's talk about um, the musicians before we start hearing some music. So you have, of course, Jerry Madera is doing the baby bass, the renowned bass player, Jose Madera, is his brother, and of course, the Madera family, renowned for Ping Madera, the father who was a great arrangement saxophone player with Machito and his job for Cubans. You have Orestes Abrantes, who on this recording is playing congas and quintos. And Georgie, you're back to playing timbales and check it in, Guido, and all that kind of good stuff. So that takes care of the, a tight rhythm section. But tell me about Jean Erdos and Tino Erdos. So they are my sons. It's Jan. Jan, because it's a Czech Jean. name. Jean. Czech okay. name is Jan. Jan. Um, well, when I realized that, that I was so lucky to have this possibility to record with my master, my teacher, you know, I. I have two sons and I, I I thought that well it's a unique chance I have I have is my my duty my role as a father to invite them to meet those people and they are studying jazz uh, Tino the trombone player is actually in um, Boston Berkeley he's at Berkeley College of Music yes yeah uh -huh. And uh, the other, uh, the, well, last year he was in uh, Los Angeles, Los Angeles, in Los Angeles. Uh -huh. He played French horn. Okay. So now he's back in Paris. So the idea was to meet all together in uh, in New York. Well, it worked out well because I like the combination: piano, percussion, Latin percussion, of course, the French horn and the trombone. And there are several tracks where they just like ride. And it's just like like this. I love it. I love it. So we're going to listen to, we're talking to our guests, Laurent Erdos and George Delgado. They are part of this new project that just came out uh, just a few weeks ago. And you have been listening to it on my radio show, Erdos Quartet, Paris Bronx Connection. And now you know why there's a Paris Bronx Connection. Otro Jazz is the title of the album. And we're going to hear a few tracks, including the first one in a minute or two. It's titled Mambo Invertido. This is one that Laurent wrote and arranged. It's Laurent on the piano. Uh, Jean, Jean, not John, yeah. Jan, Jan, like a Y. Jan, Jan Erdos on the French horn. Tino Erdos, who's studying here at Berkeley College of Music on the trombone. Jorge Delgado, as I mentioned before, he'll be on Timbales, Guido, Campana, check it. And he's also the co-producer of this album. Oreste Abrantes on the congas, Quinto, Clave, and Coros. And Jerry Madera will be on the baby bass. This was recorded in the Bronx in New York. And the first track that we're going to listen to is Mambo Invertido, which, again, uh, I skipped. Have you met Miss Jones only because time? And I had to pick one song that I wouldn't be able to play, but that was the one song that I didn't play. And I love the fact that you, you know, you're, um, what's the word I'm looking for? You're adventurous enough to say to the listener, to me, for instance, try something that you're familiar with, a mambo, but listen to this one in particular with the different clave, where you're breaking clave. And, and George, you must have all those tradicionales that say, no, tiene que ser tres, dos, dos, tres. Que es, que lo que tú estás, serio, que tú haces, man, tú estás loco, you know, right? <laughs> but, but for this music, though, it makes sense. It makes sense for this particular track, in particular, that you would be doing something a little bit out of clave in a different clave sense, right? Because it just fits well with uh, how this particular tune works etc cetera, etc cetera. how do you respond georgie you being a percussionist extraordinaire a student of music a, a teacher professor of this great art form which is latin percussion the tradition of the tres dos dos tres clave how many musicians do you think have the ability to be open-minded if you will to be able to embrace this whole idea of there's some things we can do that is very different to what traditionally we would do well, you know, in 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 in, uh, in, uh, in our industry of percussionists, uh, there's guys, there's percussionists that have that ability to play different time signatures. If you understand what I'm saying, you know, as opposed to four four one two three four one two three four. There's a lot of guys that have a a different sense, and they're very good at playing. You know, three, four, seven, four. You know, whatever you give them. Um, then you have the bunch of us that are more traditional, and we're used to playing everything in four, four. So when he he 
he, you know, he presented me with that. It, it, I, I'm not going to kid you. It took me a while to get it, you know, to understand what was the pattern. Uh, but me liking the challenge, you know, I said, you know what? It's just a matter of me sitting down and analyzing the patterns of, of what I'm going to do and how they go. And I know I'll get it. So, you know, like I said, there was a little bit of, uh, of, of anxiety as to where we going to be able to do it right. And, and I said, no, no, no worry. You know, uh, you're here and, and, and we got a purpose and, and this is what we're going to do. You know, we're going to prove ourselves wrong that we can, we can, you know, we can do it. And that's how we did it, you know, but I, I, I won't lie. It was, it was a challenge when, because when you already used to doing something for so many years, one way, and now, okay, we're going to switch this around and you're going to do this and you're going to do that. It, it does, but we did it all in, in good fun, man. I love it. I fun love it. Time doing it. Here it is, Mambo Invertido. the day the fact of the matter is the tune has swing the tune yeah. has swing you dig it and for me um this is a very special gift because george it's rare we get to hear you playing timbales you know you're always la tumbadora mm -hmm. you're playing the tumbadora so when we get this very special moment where you're doing some timbales shops we're like yes okay there's the other part of this angel showing off what he can do i love it i love it it sounds great i love this Thank sound you. And Madera does a great job at this bass, brother. He, you yeah. know, he lays it down. He lays it down. He lays it down. This is this is great stuff. Listen to this.
I love it. That that is some good stuff. Uh, this is the one we were talking about earlier. Lauren, there's um, an example where you go the opposite way, right? So Mambo Invertido, the new clave in I Can't Get Started. Well, usually you would hear this as a, a standard, which would be more like a ballad, bolerito style. You pump it yeah. up a little bit. You pump it up a little bit. A lot. Uh, I play it faster, and then uh, I, I try to give a big role to the per percussion. To George and Oreste, you, you, they had a lot of stuff to play, mm -hmm. even more than me, you know, mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. because they they had to to play between all my notes. Keep in mind, Jose. Keep in yeah. mind, Jose, that that, uh, you know, when when we called to do a production, um, it, the art of the production is to get the right. The right ingredients. Como uno, you know, you make it that rice and beans. You gotta yeah. put this and put that and bam, bam, bam. You know how it is. Yeah. And uh, great. Thank, thank God. You know, I, I called Jerry. I said, no, I got Jerry, and I got it. And we, like I said, when we first rehearsed here, remember Laurent? It was raining a lot, right? <laughs> <laughs> it was raining so much here, man. And we just sat down and, and and from the minute we started the playing the first tune i said wow man this it sounds really good so that's why we, you know we kept bugging him now yeah, you got to record it we should record it why not you know you know and we we, we we were we were serious we were goofing around but we, we were actually serious and uh and that's how we put all this together you know we you know and he came back and Call me like maybe two two or three months later he says i'm coming to new york let's put this together and let's record it and i said okay let's do you it know, well you you pick the right musicians you're right when you're cooking you have to have the right ingredients you know sofrito or sazon achiote, all the things you want to put in there and this one i like also because you you do a standard you give it a little swing you throw in a little charanga in there when you listen listen to this folks Absolutely. Thank you, George. Right, George, you can hear the, you can hear the violins. Yeah. Aragón. The only thing that was missing was the flute. Yeah. And you know, Jose, that's the great thing about this, that it's only four of us. Yeah. So we can, if we can add as many people as we want, because there's space for it. There is. And in my mind, quickly, when I got to this part, I was hearing the violins. And then I could hear the flute come in. You know? Yeah, you know, this idea is come from uh, this part come from uh, Alasais, the Joe Cuba. It's okay. more or less the same. Uh, okay. Okay. Yeah, well, so, yeah. As I'm listening to this, I have to applaud both of you because two things are happening as I listen to this music. On the one hand, I'm appreciating the innovation, the creativity, the freshness that you're putting together in these types of songs and the way you're approaching standards and then the ones that you're writing, which gives it a different flavor, if you will. At the same time, I'm appreciating that 
I'm hearing the touches of the DNA of the flames that you are carrying of Tito Puente and the small ensemble he used to do with the LP percussion. Dandy Rodriguez when he did the, you know, Dandy's Dandy and, and, and Magic. When he did those albums where they were really tight percussion and just the piano, bass, and a couple of things. Very simple. But you've got both of these ingredients. You've got the legacy of these great masters and you've got the freshness of you all putting this together and taking it to the next level into the next century into the next te- you know decades of great music and for that it, oh here's my song excuse me folks listen to this listen to this When this came out and I heard it for the first time, I went, forget about it. This is this is classic. This one is now going to be added to the classic rendition of Cherokee. I mean, you throw in the compas and then later we're going to hear a little from Mozambique. And, and Georgia, I don't know if you had anything to do with this, but I love it. I love it. I told you, this one and the Guido are the two songs that for me just take it to the next level, man. This is fantastic music. Listen to this. your son 22 he sounds great he sounds like a veteran you know george i'm listening to this and and i'm tempted to do a blind test like they used to do in downbeat magazine downbeat magazine used to do a blind test where they would bring renowned musicians and play some music without telling them who it was just to see what they would say and react i'm tempted to do a blind test where i have eddie palmieri sitting there dandy rodriguez sitting there you know, Oscar and then just sitting there and saying, I want you to hear this track. Who do you think this is? And just have them start thinking, hmm, who could that be? Wait a minute. Mm, mm, mm. Because it's fresh. It's totally, totally, totally fresh. Yeah. Not your traditional. It's just like, it's got it all. I love it. I love it. Have they heard this, by the way? George, has Oscar heard it? Eddie, anybody, you know, heard uh, this? Uh, they've heard some of it, yeah. You know, I, 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 I. Sometimes you know when we we work together, then uh, 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 we we you know we are together, and sometimes not together. You know, I we, got you. We, I got you. We, you know, we're doing taking care of other things, but uh, uh, we got a couple of things lined up with Spanish Harlem, and where 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 we'll be able to to you know um, sit down and talk, and you know then listen. You know, yeah, I hope there, so. Other times we're just running around. We just came back from Puerto Rico. I know uh, you did El Dia Nacional de la Salsa. Yeah, we did the Dia Nacional de la Salsa. Good for you. Good for you. Great. Yeah. I've seen the videos on this. Lauren, I love the sound of your sons. Listen.
love it. I love it. That is some good stuff. You know, the band, for being a small band, Lauren and George, it sounds like a big band there. On that particular cut, you sound full. The horns sound full with the percussion just jumping in on the whole thing, and everybody was in the pocket. But you make that sound very, very special. I appreciate it. That's, what, that's one of the two that I've been playing the most of the album, those two songs, that one and the other one we're going to hear later. This is like Someone in Love. Introduce this to the people a little bit, uh, Lawrence. Well, it's also a, a very old um, a jazz standard. So, uh, but I try to play this in um, basically Wawanko uh, uh, way, you know. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And uh, also, let me let me let me say let me jump in and say, you know, I mean, as a rhythm guy, we did we did what we did, but. Uh, Laurent has a lot to do with what he wanted to hear, you know, and, and the styles. I remember, Laurent, we, we, we played it differently before, right? And then you, you said, no, let's try it. Let's try the woman call and let's try to do it a little bit slower. So, you know, he also had a lot to do with, with, with what he wanted to hear. And of course, you know, our job is to, is to you know, do what, what we have to do to make it work. So he had a lot, of, a lot to do with his direction. Well, that's part of being the not only me, also Jackie, you know, because oh, Jackie with the coffee, yes, <laughs> <laughs> no, yeah, but also, also Jackie told uh, me, you know, to play salsa music, you have to be a little bit dirty, <laughs> <laughs> and uh, I it's what I, I told uh, Jan Antino to play on the Cherokee. I say, well, comparsa is a street music. You have to play this like in the street and not right. to play like in a studio very clean. You have to. It's got to have the rough edges. It's got to have the, the sound of the street. It's got to have the humanity to it. It can't be just very classically, you know, clean yeah. and, and smooth. It's similar to, and, and George has had this experience because he's been performing for so many years. You know, there are performances that take place outdoors, like the uh, Dia Nacional de la Salsa, the performances that take place that are dances. And then there are concert venues. And many of the concert venues are in performance halls that are very well known and respected throughout this uh, country. And you will find folks um, who are coming to appreciate the music sitting there politely as if they're not supposed to move. And then all of a sudden they see these latino aficionados and mambo nicks getting up and dancing they're going like what is going on but that is part of the music right it, it has to include the body getting immersed with the music and the musicians of course responding to those who are in the audience doing that thing so uh, i it's sort of like where you get the term dirty dancing it comes from the idea that you got to get funky you got to yeah. you got to get out there and just let your body flow and the music flow and that's why the yeah. music flows so well but um, i appreciate the fact that you had that that ethos of understanding that you had to get away from the mind and get more to the soul and the body in the performance. And it works, and it works really well. It works yes. really well. Listen to this. Let's go back. How long have you been playing piano now? 
How many years? Um, well, uh, maybe uh, six, eight years, something like that. Well, you play like a veteran who's been playing since you were born. And what strikes me is that I don't believe you play vibes in any of the songs that we're listening to here. It's all you on piano. Um, yeah. Which, which was surprising for you. Here we go. Listen to this one, ladies and gentlemen. Another one. This is your song. This is beautiful. Listen to this, ladies and gentlemen. This one, Guido's Montuno. selection for me sounds like a soundtrack to a movie it's a soundtrack to a movie I can see so many different movie scenes with this I mean there's love scenes there are the street the scenes of the car driving along the highway there's the scenes of the car driving along the the shore overlooking the ocean um, this is a soundtrack to a movie so if there are any movie producers out there who want to do a film, this is your man right here, and this is the song you want to incorporate. Listen to this. You're playing Guido there. Yeah. You're the hook. You're the hook. No, the, there is no Guido. <laughs> the, the Guido's the, in the mind. Listen to it. The Guido is in the, in the piano. What I play in the piano is, is the. Rocky Count. Rocky Count. I. Lauren, tell people where the inspiration to this tune came from. It, it exactly from what I say. I, I try to my idea on the, the piano. First of all, I must say, uh, as a vibe player, I'm used to play with four stick. You know, so I play uh, the piano a little bit like that. I don't play with my ten fingers, basically with uh, less fingers. <laughs> Then, because I play Guiro, I saw, well, why not play exactly the rhythm of the Guiro, but with notes. So I play, I, I may, there is no variation on the piano. The pl piano play as a Guiro player, mm -hmm. always the same. And I built after with the, the rest of the, the musician. Love it. I love this. Love this. It is a it George, you agree with me? Is this a soundtrack for a movie or what? Right? Right? Yeah. It, it, it? It's, it's, it's like uh 
how you call that that the smooth jazz you know <laughs> yeah. it's a movie it's a movie soundtrack yeah it's, no it's, matter it's, you know it's it's not too much and it's not too little you no. know it's, it's just right there you know nothing to to really go crazy maybe maybe the next production if we if we, if we can make do another production he's already talking about another production sometime well this uh, one this one has this one has that uh special flavor i can see you georgie uh george when you were when you were in san juan last week and you posted a picture from your hotel look at the ocean this song is a perfect one for you as you were walking along the beach just yeah. chilling feeling the sun rays before you had to go to perform over at the at the yeah. stadium for the, the dia nacional salsa listen to this guidos montuno singing in the chorus Lauren uh, okay it's a uh, rascamela in a way mm -hmm. uh, that's uh, well uh, our, um, my grandmother was used to uh, uh, I don't know how would you say this in English rascar me scratch, scratch my back scratch my back uh -huh. <laughs> Do, re, mi, fa, sol, la, si, do. Rate moi la puce que j'ai dans le dos. I love it. I so love it's it. the idea came from my grandmother. There you go. The ladies of Tramp. Here's another standard. Listen to this. This brings back memories and shades of both. I can hear Frank Sinatra doing his version, but I also hear George Shearing, you hear Cal Jader, you hear those great bands performing this type of music when they had that small group and the vibe player that you're not, but the piano player that you are. The Lady is a Tramp. appreciate, Lorman, that similar to Cherokee, you've taken this tune, Groovin' High, which of course many of us associate with the great Dizzy Gillespie, but again, you throw it in a different direction. You give us a curveball, not expecting what I would have seen when I saw the title Groovin' High. My expectation was, oh, here's another, you know, cover of Dizzy Gillespie's Groovin' High, but no, listen to this. That's the last thing I would have expected from Groove and High, that we would start in the groove like this, and then this melody would just flow. So, George, you have a friend there that's very talented, very creative, a genius, if I may say so myself, um, impressive in everything that you're trying to do, Lauren, because you're doing things. I always respect musicians, and George is one of them, who 
feel comfortable enough that at the end of the day, what you're doing is music. You're not doing a um, you're not doing a, a peanut butter and sandwich, a peanut butter and jelly sandwich that you say, okay, peanut butter first, jelly second, bread. Peanut butter first, jelly second, bread. But you know, you are creating with every single thing that you're doing, even within one song like this one. Um, and so I respect that because that means a that you're truly thinking of yourself as first giving us, gifting us something that's going to be to our enjoyment, but it's going to be something that's going to be everlasting, right? Because this is going to be within the canon of music and standards and jazz standards. This is going to be one of those recordings that's going to be very, you know, there are all these. And then there's this one here that does something very different, very creative with passion, with talent and skill and the unity of Paris and the Bronx, which is, in itself, just something that is to be mindful of. Listen to this bass playing. I must say, for all the years I've seen, I've seen Jerry perform live and heard him on record, this is the first recording, and again, he may have done others that I'm not aware of, but this is the first recording where he is really displaying his wide breadth of bass playing. I mean, and in and, and these cuts, he is like, you're letting him go. Not that he hasn't done that to some degree in some of the other recordings, but this is the one recording I'm really hearing the talent of Jerry Madena as a bass player. Am I wrong? Has, has he recorded someplace else that I'm missing? You're on mute. You're on mute. We can't hear you. You're on mute. You're still on mute. We can't hear you. What happened there? What, uh, did, Lauren, can you hear him? Yeah, yeah. No, I don't hear him. Yeah, we can't hear you. Yeah, we lose him. What happened? We can't hear you. We can't hear Georgie. Uh, he's going to come back on. Okay. Let's see if you got to. You're still muted. You're still muted. You might have to start over. Anyway, I try to... Try to answer that question. <laughs> I try to give a, a lot of place of those wonderful musicians. I want them to be happy and to have the... You know, because they, they, they are playing in a, many bands where they had really to make the accompaniment and they had to be very, they have n not so much liberty in a real salsa gig. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And here there is some place that they can play what they want. No, well, um, these tracks have allowed all of them, I mean, I'm... I'm I am familiar, of course, with both um, Georgie's playing and, and Jerry's playing and Oresta's playing. But on this particular track, just being able to hear Jerry branch out and play fully of uh, the bass instrument is really a joy. George, let me hear you talk to us. For whatever reason, you've been on mute. We lost your we lost your uh, we lost your voice. We lost your audio. We can see you. You look good, but we can't hear you. <laughs> You're going to come back. OK. We've got a few minutes, so you're going to write it out. Okay. <laughs> Let's go back to the days where we wrote. Here's it's funny because the last interview we we done with George, it's happened to me. Oh, my goodness. Okay. Same story with me. Okay. So this is the last track we'll be listening to. It's titled Como Criollo. And um, this one, I think, is this yours? Como Criollo? This is one of yours, right, Laurent? You wrote this one. Uh, yes, but it's not really... I. It's a descarga, you know, so uh -huh. I can't say that I wrote something. It's more uh, pure improvisation. I just uh, give the idea on the piano, which is a little bit different on the harmony that we are used to. Yeah. And then uh, we say, Jan, OK, play what you want. I, I have wrote some very little simple phrase 
and I told Jan, well, if you want, you can use this phrase in your solo or not. You are free. Okay. okay. Georgia, you put something up. Put it up again so we can read it. What's it say? Uh, let me see. I can't really see that. It says, gone buddy, call me, and somehow we lost my end. Oh, somebody called you and you lost your end. Hmm. All right. Well, that's un that's unfortunate because I want to hear your voice. But um, that happens. Technology happens that way. So this is the last tune that we're listening to off the album by Erdos Quartet, Paris Bronx Connection, Otro Jazz, uh, Corno Criollo. Again, the musicians on this recording, just so that all of you know who we've been listening to, have been Laurent Erdos on the piano, and he's the producer and chorus, Leon Erdos on the French horn and chorus, Tino Erdos, who's studying here at Berkeley College of Music on the trombone, George Delgado, who's a co-producer, Timbales, Guido, Campana, and Shekere, Oreste Abrentes, Congas, Quinto, Clave, and Coros, and Jerry Madena, who's done a masterful job on Baby Bass. It was recorded here in the Bronx, the engineer, Adam Perez, and some good stuff, and I appreciate all of this great music. And I'm hoping that um, maybe sometime uh, you'll be here on this part of the world, and we'll get to meet Laurent, and maybe you'll be performing with George and... Um, a band that you'll put together that includes these great musicians so that we can see you perform live. And in particular, since you have a connection to Boston and the Bronx, maybe we'll see you in Boston doing something along that I will line. love to play. That you know, I would love to play this music in front of a public. It'd be great. It'd but be you great. know that it's not so easy to find uh, gigs and stuff like that. Yeah, yeah. Well, we'll have to become creative, but... Um, George Delgado, we can't hear you, but we see you. I just want to say I love you. Thank you for connecting me to another living angel. Laurent, George knows very well that I believe that when we were placed on earth, us human beings, the Lord up above, she was very creative, and she said, I'm going to give you a very special gift, human beings. I'm going to give you living angels amongst you. And these living angels, through the love and the passion that they have for the arts, regardless of their writers, of their sculptors, of their actors, dancers, poets, painters. But if they are artists and in particular musicians, it's through their music that you're going to know what love is because you, the musicians, you're the ones that bring us peace, love, and happiness to our hearts and joy and harmony to our lives. You're the ones that bring us light when there is darkness. You're the ones that inspire us when we need inspiration. You're the ones that heal us when we are feeling ill. Your music is a healing power. You're the ones that create movement amongst people. You're the ones that create the soundtrack for our love, for our sadness, for whatever it is that we experience in life. And we are blessed that we have living angels such as you, Laurent, and such as you, George Delgado. And for that, I will always be grateful. So thank you for spending this time with us. And I look forward to seeing you sometime in the very near future. And so I'm going to leave you with the microphone to say goodbye. And then until the next time, Laurent. Thank you very much. And I appreciate the way you understand my music. Really, not everybody uh, see you really read all what uh, in the in the music. Thank you very much. I feel now I, I will sleep very well tonight. <laughs> all right. Well, thank you, my brother. I appreciate you. And thanks again for the great music. And my regards to your family. George, I love you. Bendiciones para ti. Un abrazo. Ache. Palante. Siempre. Thank you. Be well. Take care.